Well, you know, if I could, if I could do anything else, I would. Uh, it got to the point where it was just uh, the the uh, big band music that I was writing was really uh, giving me uh, what I needed musically, and uh, it seemed to be resonating with people who heard it. And I, you know, I found it satisfying to to do, and uh, satisfying to have done. Um, so I. You know, I, I tried to quit the big band habit, but it just didn't work. So uh, I kind of, I you know, ended up writing a whole bunch of material for the band. And uh, over the course of a couple of years, my first couple of years in New York, we would rehearse periodically, and I would try like different groups of musicians, and eventually kind of settled on a, on a core personnel. And uh, we had our, our first gig at the uh, late lamented punk rock club CBGB. And you know, if that gig had gone poorly and no one had shown up, you know, maybe it would have been a different story. But unfortunately, that gig went well, and so I kind of got um, uh, seduced into the idea of like, oh well, maybe I could make this a regular thing. Uh, and here we are. Well, a lot of it is who's is going to put up with with me at the demands of the music, you know. Uh, there are players who are playing, you know, five, six different instruments in the wind section. You know, our uh, our sort of you know first wind player has been like piccolo flute, alto flute, soprano sax, way more than alto sax, which would be the normal instrument lead in a big band sax section. You know, our Barry sax player is playing bass clarinet, and contra bass clarinet, all that kind of stuff. So some of it is just like uh, who has these axes and who can kind of play them, and uh, a lot of it is just. Uh, you know, um, friends of, of, of people who are in the band, you know, I rely a lot on their uh, recommendations to let me know, uh, you know, who might be a suitable sub and a lot of kind of uh, trial and error. You know, the music is uh, the music's a pain in the ass. It's really hard to play. Uh, it's not uh, really gratifying in a traditional jazz sense when a band where you might like have a lot of solos, you know, the way I write tends to be like, you know, one solo uh, per tune for one sort of featured person. So it's not, it's not a blowing band. There's a lot of very difficult and demanding um, section parts. And also, like, it's not um, overtly virtuosic music. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to make it sound difficult. And so some people are kind of into like the sense of accomplishment that comes with playing something that, that sounds like really thorny to play and, and nailing it. You know, with my music, if people nail the really hard bits, it sounds easy. And so it's, it's, a, it's a difficult, uh, it's, it's not, you know, it's not for everyone. And so there's, um, you know, uh, uh, when someone new comes in to sub with the band, there's a process of sort of feeling each other out of like, okay, you know, here's the deal with this music. Uh, are you okay with it? And can you hang with the demands of, of you know, the doubling and the reading and all that kind of stuff and just conceptually. So, you know, sometimes uh, when new people come in, it works out, sometimes it doesn't, but it's, you know, that's why it's a society <laughs> and not an orchestra. That, that's an element that went into it. I mean, the other thing is, you know, in those early days at, at CB's, uh, uh, it you know, you had to go down in the basement, and it really did feel like this kind of, like, you know, uh, literally underground club that almost no one sort of knew about, like, you know, this Sunday night jazz series at CBGB, and uh, it, it it was very uh, it was very kind of quirky and insular, and the the people who would would actually show up, uh, they would be real characters, and they would also uh, the band would frequently outnumber them <laughs> in the audience, so it, it kind of felt like um, the right moniker for for the group. It's like it's not that no one showed up for the gig; it's that it was a secret. Well, yeah, well, you know, I, I I was certainly, and then um, when our record came out, the band started to get uh, really busy, and then I I had to. Uh, sort of give up the, the active blogging that, that I used to do because there were a lot more demands in terms of like just running the band and um, s you know setting up gigs and tours and all that kind of stuff and so the, the, uh, the blogging aspect uh, fell by the wayside uh, but before we had our record out that was really you know the um, you know it was something that I, I, I took 
uh, and I had the luxury of time to take pretty seriously going out to a lot of concerts, reviewing shows, you know, as a, as a formal credited reviewer and kind of getting a sense of, of like what you guys all do uh, uh, from a, a, you know, from the perspective of, of me as a, as a musician trying to write, you know, um, reasonably uh, intelligently and interestingly about the, the music that, that I was seeing. And that was, I think that was a really good experience for me just to try my hand at, uh, at music criticism and uh, to try and do it from the perspective of, you know, a, a, a working musician and uh, as someone who sort of like knows the nuts and bolts of, of the music a certain way. Um, and now I, I think more, I'm sort of concentrating more on, on social media, especially uh, Twitter, because it's, it's easier and faster and something you can kind of dash off um, in the car on the way down to the gig. Um, and I, I, you know, I would like to, at some point, return to more long form blogging of the kind that you know, Ethan Iverson does. But I also feel like you know, there's a lot, the jazz blogosphere is a lot more populated now. You know, when I started, it was fairly uh, thin on the ground. So when I had to step back from that, I felt like, well, you know, at least it's in good hands. Darcy James Argue, and to check out more videos, go to jazztimes.com.